Good day, friends. Thanks for stopping by. I've been working on this sock for a while. Longer than usual, in fact. So I thought I'd do a bit of a yarn review and let you know what I think of this particular sample. If you're looking for a concise summary, I assure you that's at the end of the video, so please be sure to stick around. Estella Yarn Sockatomy Impulse is a discontinued yarn that I picked up at Gina Brown's, one of my local yarn stores here in Calgary, Alberta. As it's discontinued, you will probably find it floating around in the discount bin at your own local yarn store. I, most recently, found it floating around in my own bins, so I thought that what I would do is fish it out and knit a pair of socks out of it. Unfortunately, I neglected to take a picture of the ball pre-winding. Now, here's a few things to keep in mind if the pretty colors tempt you. The original commercial ball of yarn didn't give many indications that there would be so much grey. The yellow also feels quite overwhelming. I think that's because they used yellow to blend with both the pink, the blue, you can see it over dyeing as a bit of green. The modeling of the dye, picking up at more or less different parts of the strand, gives a kind of watercolor look to the fabric that I quite admire. It's just a shame about the yellow and gray. It makes it look kind of dingy. The yarn seemed squishier in the ball, softer. It's about the same roughness as any other ball of yarn. It just seemed different in the ball. When I first started handling the fabric, it seemed a bit rough, and I hate to admit this, I was thankful that these socks weren't meant for me. The feel has grown on me since. I don't think anyone who wears them will have any problem with the texture. It's just not the softest wool to handle, and considering I use a lot of what I'd call workhorse yarns, yarns that are sturdy enough to take a bit of handling, that's not really an issue. Honestly, I just hope the recipient will like them, because as it stands right now, I have doubts. The yarn is a single ply, which leads to an entirely different set of issues. I'm used to zipping along, knitting while I read or watch a show on the computer or TV. I can't do that with this yarn, because there's a good chance I'll only pick up half a stitch or less. The last thing I need is a run or drop stitch, because I didn't pick up the full loop, and whatever I did pick up wore through loosening the stitches. Or a bear patch. <laughs> Bare patches would be equally horrible. So I'm knitting these socks very slowly, and it's not an experience that I enjoy. I'm used to the biggest hurdle with a pair of socks being the cuff. Mostly from sheer monotony, and well, we've already determined that I consider purling a necessary evil. After that, it's usually a quick zoom to the heel flap, an afternoon or an evening spent doing heel decreases, and then we're zipping off again this time down to the foot. Easy peasy, right? Not today, kids. Today we are knitting the socks that never end, and it is so not my thing. Knitters often self-identify as either process or product knitters. That is to say, do they knit for the experience, or do they knit for the stuff they can get from it? Many knitters skew one direction or the other. I could argue that I'm a process knitter. I'll learn a new technique or start a project that uses a technique that I'm learning, and then I'll give the product away to a family member for Yule or for their birthday. You could also argue the opposite. I liked the project, and I knit it for that person because it would make a good gift. Therefore, 
I'm a product-oriented knitter. Truth is, I'm a combination of the two. I like the process enough that I'm willing to actually film the process of making the project, and I'm enough of a realist to realize I can't keep all of the woolly objects in the house, otherwise I'd be tripping on all the yarn littering the place. Socks are one of those few projects where, as much as I enjoy knitting them, I get a serious feeling of satisfaction from seeing a finished pair. The longer I work on a pair of socks without getting that hit, for lack of a better term, the closer my chances are of sending that pair to the timeout bin while I happily start another pair that will behave. I have now managed to get past the 20 rounds of Knit 2 Purl 2 on sock number 2. I don't know if I'm getting more patient as I get older or if I've just bought into the aesthetic of a nice substantial cuff, but when I first started knitting socks I barely had the fortitude to knit 10 rounds of rib stitch, let alone 15. Now I'm making 20 rounds my standard and when it comes to this sock yarn I'm happy that's done. It's probably time to find something on YouTube, Costube, Netflix or Prime and get this thing done so I can move on to something more satisfying. So to sum it up, Estelle yarns Sockatomy Impulse. Yarn is discontinued so your chances of running into it in the wild are fairly low. If you do stumble across it, be aware that it may not look as cute as a shawl or a pair of socks as it does in the ball, and the yarn probably won't be as soft as it seems. Watch for sections of muddy color. Under the studio lights and in the camera this looks a whole lot brighter than it does in person, so your mileage may vary depending on what you prefer. The yarn is sturdy but unplied, so you're taking your chances if you're a knitter who knits without looking at their hands. Your chances of dropping a stitch or causing a run go up exponentially with this yarn. And the feel of the fabric does grow on you, but if the colors aren't what you expected, then you may still find yourself wallowing in the shallow waiting pool of regret. I give this yarn a solid two skeins out of five. It didn't suck mightily, it was okay, and I had concerns. If you've used Socket to me before, what has your experience been? I mean, I fully realize that knitters' experiences are subjective and that what one person finds horrible, another may fight tooth and nail to acquire. As I've mentioned before in this video, your mileage of course may vary. I hope you've enjoyed hearing me babble on about yarn. I often think I should be doing yarn reviews, but in the past couple of years I've been using a bunch of old standbys and that would make for a bunch of really boring yarn reviews. <laughs> this was a different brand from the usual, and I'm always open to suggestions and once I'm in a position to do some more purchasing, I would love to expand the review section of the vlog. If there's a yarn you'd like me to try, just leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, why not nudge the subscribe button, and if you'd like to be notified when I've uploaded new content, bell's your buddy. <laughs> <laughs>